Thanks again for taking my AZ-900 certification course where I'm going to prepare you to take and pass the AZ-900 certification exam as quickly and easily as possible. So I've created a study guide and my study guide is great for those that are neurodiverse. So if you have any types of neurodiversity, ADHD, ADD, it's all very friendly to those with those types of issues. There's no overwhelming color or fonts. It's a consistent layout throughout the guide. Now I'm an actual professor. I do teach college and I have a lot of neurodiverse students in my classes. So I understand what it takes in order to properly teach people with neurodiversity. So I tried to make it as easy as possible. And even if you don't have neurodiversity, say you're neurotypical, it's still going to make it easier to study without distractions. This is Microsoft Study Guide from the link that you see at the top. And I'll go ahead and put these links in the description. But this is really just an empty template. That's all it is. It doesn't actually give you any information in their study guide. They just have a list of things that you need to study. It doesn't have any descriptions whatsoever. But below, the second link is going to be Microsoft's basic but incomplete study material. But basically, you would just read through this, and it takes about 30 minutes, and it doesn't really prepare you to take the test. But I've gone ahead and included these links anyway, so you can go ahead and take a look at those if you'd like. Now, my study guide, I used the Microsoft guide from that previous slide, that top link. I downloaded it, but then I filled it all in. I filled in all the relevant information for passing the test. Now, I've been in this business a long time, not just as a professor, but also as an IT consultant, a sysadmin. And I've had lots of different roles over the years. And so for me, passing the test wasn't as difficult because I'm not new to this. As a matter of fact, I went ahead, downloaded the Microsoft Guide, filled it all in, and I took the test three days later and passed it. So you're going to see a lot of free videos in this course description in the guide that I'm going to provide you. And like I said, I passed this very quickly in three days. I just got four questions wrong, I believe. And I went ahead and looked up afterwards what those that I got wrong. And I went ahead and updated the study guide to make sure it was all correct. So there's no cost to you for all these videos. You can go ahead and click on the links next to each of the study guide descriptions. So let's talk about the exam. You want to take the exam. You're not really sure what you're going to see. All the stuff that you see online is not exactly what is going to be on the exam. So let's take a look. In the U.S., it's going to be $99. It's going to vary in various different countries. So I don't know what it will be in your country, but I just know in the United States, it's $99. They give you 60 minutes. That is universally true. However, if you have some sort of neurodiversity, you can request additional time when you go to sign up for the test. And it usually takes a few extra days, but they'll go ahead and approve your extra time if you have uh, some sort of issue that requires it. Now, according to the sites like Microsoft and various others, they all say, oh, you're going to get 40 to 60 multiple choice questions. Not always true. I had 34. I don't know why I had 34 and why it says 40 to 60, but that's exactly what I had. Now, as far as answers goes, you're going to see drop downs, multi answer, single answer and drag and drop. So the drop down basically is you'll be asked a question. You hit the drop down arrow. You choose which one is the right answer. And there's many questions that have multiple drop downs, three or four drop downs in a particular question. Then you're going to see some multi-answer where you're going to select multiple like A and C or B and D, things like that. There are some single answer. There's actually not a lot of single answers compared to all the other types. And then there's drag and drop. Now, drag and drop is a little bit tricky. I misread the first drag and drop and I had to go back and find out exactly what I had done because the second drag and drop I saw said that you can only use one answer one time, but another drag and drop question said you may be able to use the answers multiple times in multiple places and some answers you may not even use. So you drag from left to right and uh, then you, that's how you answer the question. Make sure you read each question that has a drag and drop to see whether it's you use only the answers on the left once or that you can reuse them and some will not be used. 
That's going to make a big difference in answering the exam questions. There are no case studies, so you don't have to worry about that. Those are going to be obviously in other Azure types of exams, such as the next one, which is logical, which is the AZ-104. So when are you ready to take this exam? Well, with experience, you can use this study guide and watch the free videos. And you can go ahead and take the exam fairly quickly once you feel like you have a good handle on this, you've taken some of the practice quizzes, and you've done very well on them. Now, if you have zero experience or very little experience with Azure or with IT in general, then you should probably take a course. You could take a course at your local college or university. You could also go to AscendEducation.com. I've made a lot of videos for AscendEducation.com's courses, such as the AZ-104, AZ-900, a lot of CompTIA tests like Network Plus, A+, Plus, et cetera. So I do have a history with AscendEducation.com. I went to them and I said, hey, can I get a discount code for those who would like to take this test? And they said, sure. So you're going to get 40% off for one year. So you'll be able to have the course for one year for $199. Now, I don't get any kind of a cut out of this. This is not me trying to sell you on something. This is me trying to properly prepare you for the AZ-900 exam. So if you have little to no experience, I don't think that this guide is going to be enough for you to pass the test because you may not understand the terms that I talk about in this course. So this way you will have all the information you need and then you'll come back to this prep course and then you can go ahead and pass your test. Let's take a look at the guide. And here is the Microsoft Study Guide. This is in Word format, but it's also going to be available in PDF as well. And here you can see that everything fits on one page. So once again, I'm trying to make this as friendly as possible so you don't get overwhelmed with information. So this is the Microsoft template where I filled it all in. If you take a look at the audience profile, then you can see basic information about what it takes to pass this exam. So you need to understand these various different prerequisites. Once you feel you understand what compute, networking, and storage are, et cetera, then you can go ahead and move on to the next step. If you don't understand any of those, these things, then I recommend that you go to the Ascend Education course. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and collapse these. Now I'm going to go on to describe cloud concepts. These are, once again, pulled right from the AZ-900 course from Microsoft. And then it's going to finish up with additional study items. The additional study items are basically just things that I found that were relevant that weren't necessarily in these first three sections that Microsoft recommended. So that way you'll have all the additional terms and definitions for passing your exam that may not have been included in the Microsoft document. So if I expand the first chapter of these three chapters, you can see that you've got describe cloud computing. I went ahead and described what those are for you. Now, next to each one of these, I haven't recorded them yet, but by the time you see this, you'll see a link to the video that explains what you're seeing here. Some people learn better by watching videos. Some people learn better by reading. But either way, I've got both of those covered for you. So if you, this particular section on Describe Cloud Computing, for instance, doesn't make a lot of sense, then it's possible that you may need to watch the video to go along with it. So if you're confident about some of these different subjects, great, you can move on to the next subject. But if you're not, you can go ahead and watch the accompanying video, which is free on YouTube, and that will give you uh, better ideas of what's going on. Plus, most of the videos have demonstrations as well. So that will give you context and understanding to what it is that you're reading. If any area is something that you don't need, you can go ahead and collapse it and go to the next section. So once you read Define Cloud Models, you can see public, private, and hybrid. Great, I watched the video that comes along with it. I can go ahead and collapse that. Once again, trying to keep you from being overwhelmed with information. So I can go ahead and collapse each one as I read it and study it. Now, again, as a professor, one thing that I recommend is that you take notes. Even if you never 
look at those notes again just by writing notes down things that mean something to you or help you to study further by writing things down that will help you remember twice as much information than if you just read it only or watch the video only even if you never look at it again just by writing it down studies have shown you'll remember twice as much so it's a great idea to go ahead and write down some notes as if you were listening to a lecture by a professor in your school all right, so all these different areas, we'll go ahead and collapse the first chapter. We'll go to the second one. All these different areas give you an idea of what's going on. This is all research that I had went ahead and done. Uh, of course, research online of, as well as experience that I have. I've gone ahead and added all this in for you. I've added some graphics along the way as well. And you'll see more graphics and, of course, demonstrations in the videos themselves. So we've got these three chapters. Once you're done with the three chapters, go ahead and take a look at the additional study items. As I had mentioned, there are some terms that you should be aware of in these study items because they did not show up necessarily in Microsoft's study area from those links I showed you earlier. But I did notice that these types of terms were something that may show up in your exam. So go ahead and take a look at those so you understand them. Now I'll also have a practice quiz as well that you can use. Now it'll be in Word as well as PDF format that you can go ahead and use and study from. So that is our Microsoft Study Guide for passing the AZ-900 exam. Good luck on your exam. Be sure to watch the videos as many times as you need to totally understand all the different concepts and keep the study guide handy.